The BYU basketball program has the fifth seed in the first round bye in this week's Big 12 tournament. I think all of us, and yours truly included, have underrated how important of a debut season this was for Mark Pope and company. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you for being everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where, of course, the motto is your team every day. This is your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports, and today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Use the promo code Locked On College after you create an account, and you'll get $20 off your first purchase. All right, let's dive right in on today's show on the BYU men's basketball program. Got a senior night victory over Oklahoma State on Saturday night, and they are now the fifth seed in the Big 12 tournament by virtue of holding the tiebreaker over the Kansas Jayhawks. And as I said in the open, I think all of us, and I'm including myself in this, I think that we have done a a fairly decent job chronicling how well BYU basketball has done this season. But let's just reiterate that now that the regular season is completed, BYU is 22 and nine folks. They're 10 and eight in the big 12. This was a program just a year ago. If you were have shown me uh, the future, if I had the, the DeLorean uh, from back to the future, I went 88 miles an hour. I went back in and was shown the 20, uh, 24 basketball standings for the big 12 conference last uh, March, when I was watching BYU finish fifth in the West coast conference. And you were to tell me that BYU was going to finish fifth the next year in the big 12 conference and looking like they're going to be a five, maybe a six, and even, as good as a four seed, depending how this week goes, with a chance to play in Salt Lake City in the first and second round of the NCAA tournament, I would have said, get out of here. You're absolutely nuts. Blah, blah, blah. I would just say, just get out of here. This is an absolutely incredible accomplishment from Mark Pope and company. I remember last year, I, I, along with others, were talking about, okay, does Mark Pope last one, maybe two years in the Big 12? Does he decide to beat the quote-unquote posse out of town uh, by uh, resigning his position and going and finding something else or finding another position for himself? Well, he uh, doubled down, believed in what he had going on at BYU, and delivered an absolutely remarkable season. Yes, you're not winning a conference a championship in terms of regular season conference title. We'll see how the Big 12 tournament plays out later this week, but considering the up uh, the step up in competition for BYU, I honestly believe this is one of the top five BYU basketball seasons of all time. You can include Danny Ainge in 1980-81. You can include uh, Jimmer Fredette in 2010-2011. You can remember include that 2020 team, Mark Pope's first team, uh, 2019-2020 team that got, had the NCAA tournament canceled on them. I honestly believe the accomplishments that this BYU basketball team made and what they have done so far, the resume they have put together, put it, I think, absolutely in the mix as one of the great BYU teams of all time. Now, if they really want to cement that legacy, well, guess what? The next two to three weeks are what's ultimately going to uh, bear that out. They go out and lose in the first round, uh, technically be the second round of the Big 12 tournament this week. Okay, you're probably locked in as a five or a six seed. You lose in the first round of the NCAA tournament, okay, that's going to put a damper on this. But I think that uh, considering the circumstances, how uh, poor BYU appeared coming out of the West Coast Conference going in to the Big 12 Conference, also the fact that BYU was picked 13th out of 14 teams in the preseason uh, Big 12 poll. This is an absolutely remarkable campaign for Mark Pope and company. Is it going to yield a BYU and a uh, other, uh, I was trying to say, is it going to yield BYU extra opportunities with regards to recruiting? It should, but also at the same time, it's kind of a two edged sword. You're going to see Mark Pope listed as all kinds of uh, uh, job options open up, including we've already heard that uh, Washington, Mike Hopkins, who's been the head coach for the Washington Huskies, he's been informed that he is being relieved of duties as soon as the season ends, whenever it ends for the Washington Huskies. And Mark Pope, being a Bellevue, Washington native just outside of Seattle, well, he's easily and already being mentioned as a candidate for that position. So 
there's a very interesting offseason to come for BYU because Mark Pope obviously is going to have a lot of people chasing him. There's going to be a lot of programs sniffing around BYU players. I, I imagine anybody on this roster who has contributed to a high level, if they're in the rotation for BYU and they have eligibility remaining, you can guarantee some of the bigger fish out there in the college basketball world, even if BYU is power six in this circumstance, they are still a smaller fish compared to some other programs out there. They're going to be sniffing around about NIA and transfer portal stuff. The, the biggest thing for BYU to accomplish this year in my mind is to put together a nice postseason. And that what that means is I think you need to win at least one game here in the Big 12 championship, uh, the, the Big 12 tournament uh, championship this weekend, and then win at least one game in the NCAA tournament. And then we'll see uh, beyond that. Anything beyond that I think is a pretty remarkable accomplishment. Now, if you are seated fourth or fifth, well, you're being seated to potentially advance as far as the Sweet 16. So there is an interesting dynamic at play here for BYU, and there's going to be a lot of uh, conversation about the Cougars in coming days and or weeks, and I'm looking forward to it. But we need to also acknowledge that BYU had an absolutely remarkable, remarkable run. Now, I want to look back at Saturday night real quick. Um, by the way, I should uh, probably acknowledge right now, apologies for the lack of a postcast that night. I was assigned to be on uh, Real Salt Lake duty on the radio, so I was keeping tabs on the BYU basketball game. I didn't feel comfortable having not watched every second of the game uh, to sit down and uh, talk about it. So I actually finally got a chance to sit down on Sunday and watch the entirety of the game. And really remarkable. Uh, BYU had one of their patented uh, first half struggle from the three-point line. Then they come out in the second half and just absolutely blitz Oklahoma State. They were 8 of 12, if I recall correctly, uh, from three point uh, from the three-point arc in the second half and just absolutely uh, laid in to Oklahoma State. They took what was a three-point lead at halftime and built as big as a, it was a 25-point lead as the game uh, progressed in the second half. A really, really nice run. Sending out Jackson Robinson, uh, Traden Christensen, and Spencer Johnson the right way. By the way, Spencer Johnson, talk about a dude who took uh, his shots uh, literally, figuratively, and literally uh, when it came to offense and defense in this game. I think he had at least one flavor of foul against him. Two more that were reviewed for uh, such acts, hostile acts as they call them, but you know what? A big win for BYU, finishing off the season the right way. And once again, uh, kind of a, another patented uh, thing with Mark Pope this season is every time they had lost in the Big 12, they didn't let it linger. They bounced back immediately and won the very next game. That's the mark of a team that is uh, just able to move uh, from game to game and not have things stick in their mind. I really like that about this BYU basketball squad. And will it benefit them as they go into the postseason? Yes, it will. This is a team that, yes, the three-point uh, line is their bread and butter. If they were hitting threes from beyond the arc, they're capable of beating almost anybody, it feels like, in college basketball. Now, conversely, if they are missing, if they're off that day, well, they just easily could lose to anybody as well. So that's kind of the, the razor's edge BYU's playing with his head in the postseason here. But this is a team brimming with confidence. You could tell in that second half, they were like, you know what? We're not screwing around anymore. We're, we're ending this right now. And I was really impressed with that senior day victory for BYU. And I think that that is going to benefit them now as they head into this Big 12 tournament. Uh, they will be looking forward to seeing who they face, uh, the winner of UCF and West Virginia on uh, Wednesday morning, 10.30 a.m. Mountain Time. It'll be on ESPN or ESPN2, if I recall correctly. I don't know if I've seen the designation of which channel exactly, but BYU will get the Mountaineers or the Knights uh, for a rematch. And uh, looking forward to it because it's a big opportunity for the Cougars uh, to really really state claim that yes, we are one of the upper echelon teams in this big 12 conference. And the remarkable thing about this is I think Dick Harmon pointed it out in the Deseret news. This is a BYU team picked 13th out of 14 teams in the big 12. And they finished in front of preseason uh, poll. Number one, uh, big 12 poll. Number one, Kansas uh, who finished with a 10 and eight record, but BYU by virtue of their win in Lawrence had the tiebreaker and therefore got the five seed over the six seed for the Jayhawks. It's been an incredible year, a truly incredible year for BYU. And the best part is postseason honors come with that. We'll talk about Jackson Robinson being honored with a with an award. I thought he was the front runner for the entirety of the uh, of the Big 12 season. And we'll get to that coming up next right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports uh, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. No matter what you're looking for, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experience with smart TVs as well as a Fire, st Fire TV stick. If you're a smart TV, doesn't already have a Fire TV installed on. The best part is it has millions of movies and TV episodes available to you as well as free, TV, free and live TV 
as well. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball upcoming, the college basketball tournament, which is just a week or so off, you're going to want to have a Fire TV and do it with our friends at Amazon. Amazon Fire TV recently created the Fire TV channels app to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. The best part is that includes all of us over here at the Locked On Podcast Network, as well as most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels help you dive into the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. And I've mentioned great uh, news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well, if that's what you're into uh, besides sports. Check out Fire TV channels up on Fire TV and Alexa devices today. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. That's Amazon.com slash Locked On fire tv today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at game time now game time is here for you my friends no matter what event or events you're looking to go to whether it's sports music comedy and theater events they're all available and you can do it with our friends at game time with absolutely killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and the best price guarantee it takes all the guesswork out of buying the tickets to the event you're looking to go to the best part is they have a zone deals where you can uh, pick where you want to sit in the arena and they'll tell you uh, the price you're going to pay and then they get you in the event. The best part is they have flash deals, sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. So take advantage of all of the features they have available to you. And the best part is with the game time guarantee, you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with our friends at game time. Download the game time app today, create an account, and use the promo code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the promo code L O C K E D. Owen for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. I want to encourage you if you've not done so already. Please consider signing up for our Locked On uh, Cougars Insider Group. It's a really fun way to interact with the show. I'm sending live updates when I'm out at BYU uh, football practices. Uh, Saturday, I wasn't at the BYU game, so I was able to do my typical chat as where I'm sitting on media row uh, going back and forth with y'all. Uh, and I should also acknowledge this right off the top. I'm wearing a red shirt today if you're watching this on YouTube. So before I see some jabroni uh, calling me a ute in cougar clothing, that legitimately, I was called that. At one point on a let's just put it, a certain a BYU message board site that I was sent a screenshot of that. I have to go back and find it. But yes, I am not a Ute in Cougar clothing. I'm just wearing a San Francisco 49ers shirt. So bear with me. And I want to get that uh, cleared up right now before I, like I said, to get another one of those messages. But regardless, uh, sign up for our Locked On Cougars Insider Group. It's a great way to interact with the show. It comes directly to your phone via text message. You can fire back with a text message yourself and we can uh, go back and forth. It's a really, really fun way to interact with the show and get the inside uh, intel I've got for you guys literally in the moment I'm uh, disseminating it. All right, uh, let's talk some more BYU basketball here. Jackson Robinson, got to say congratulations to that young man. He was named Big 12 Sixth Man of the Year. Absolutely incredible accomplishment for this young man as it appears to be his final season as a BYU Cougar. That will serve him well now as he goes into the professional ranks or whatever is next for him. I'm assuming if I'm, if I'm Jackson Robinson, I'm declaring for the NBA draft the second the BYU season ends. Like he could probably get up there on the dais if they lose in the Sweet 16, the first, or whatever the season ends. He could get up there and say, you know what I'm doing right now? I'm declaring myself eligible for the 2024 NBA draft. He is a bona fide NBA draft prospect, 6'7", seven, seven, one wingspan, and has shown all of the abilities uh, to be a guy that can be an impact player at the next level. But I thought this was an award that was tailor-made for what he was doing for BYU basketball. And the Big 12 has honored him as the Big 12 Sixth Man of the Year. They announced that uh, Sunday afternoon, and congratulations to Jackson Robinson. Absolutely incredible accomplishment for him. Uh, the senior also up, also picked up all Big 12 honorable mention accolades include, alongside his teammates Dallin Hall, Fuseni Traore, and Spencer Johnson. We're in the world's Ali Khalifa's award. And by the way, Jackson Robinson, if you're the Sixth Man of the Year, you can't even make one of the three Big 12, uh, all Big 12 teams. It seems like BYU got a little downgraded here, especially considering the season that the Cougar ha the Cougars had. I would have thought Jackson Robinson, if you're going to win an individual award in the postseason honors, you shouldn't just be an honorable mention. Uh, you should be uh, maybe on the third team at, at minimum to me. And the fact that Ali Khalifa did not get Big 12 honors 
baffles me to no end. That was a guy that, once again, he I think he's uh, still top 10 in the country in assist to turnover ratio. And he is, uh, I think, in like the t- in terms of like the top 50 guys in that stat, he's the only guy taller than like six foot five in that award. But nonetheless, uh, the league's head coaches uh, uh, were the ones that voted on this. And apparently, uh, they did not believe BYU players were uh, eligible or not eligible. They weren't uh, deserving of one of those 15 all Big 12 slots. But uh, four guys, uh, once again, Dallin Hall, Fus Traore, uh, Spencer Johnson, and then Jackson Robinson with that honorable mention, all Big 12 uh, standing. So it, it, it's cool to, to see Jackson Robinson get this award. He's the second Cougar in program history, and the first is Jonathan Tavernari in 2009-2010 to be named a league's top reserve. He averaged 13.9 points per game this season, and honestly, a lot of people out there have questioned uh, why he was not in the starting lineup for BYU. Well, I think Mark Pope uh, admitted last week that he's asked Jackson Robinson, would you like to be in the starting lineup? And Jackson says, I'm totally okay being in the role that I'm in. He came off the bench in 24 of his 30 appearances uh, this season, including uh, scoring double figures in 23 of those games, including four games of 20 plus points, shooting 43% from the field, 34.6% from three and a team high 89.5% from the free throw line. It's an absolutely remarkable season for Jackson Robinson. This is a kid who has absolutely come into his own. We were talking with Mark Pope last week during media availability. He said that he continues to show things every single time he's on the court that are going to have NBA teams saying, okay, I like that. I like that. The best part about Jackson, I already mentioned, he's 6'7 with a 7'1 wingspan. He has got the NBA measurables that teams covet for a wing player uh, and also has the shooting numbers to back it up. He has shown his ability to be a, an impact player on the defensive uh, side of the basketball when he's engaged. And at the same time, his ability to play both uh, beyond the arc and inside uh, when he uh, is capable of getting to the rim, he has shown an ability to finish at the rim that is absolutely something that NBA teams crave because uh, more and more the NBA, similar to the style that BYU plays, it's either you shoot the three or you're attacking at the rim and you're, you're scoring there. The mid-range game is, it's there, but... Honestly, it's all of you who watch NBA basketball, you know what I'm talking about. It's the three or you get to the rim and score there. And the nice part is he's starting to show a little bit of ability to, to shoot the floater when he doesn't necessarily expect to be able to get right to the rim. So I, I really, really like what Jackson Robinson brought to the BYU basketball program. He's a guy who bought in. This was, He was a well-traveled athlete before this, having spent time at Texas A&M and Arkansas. And uh, he was a guy that Arkansas uh, discarded when they were going to the transfer portal to revamp their roster. And uh, considering what Arkansas has accomplished this year, and I think they're like a 500 team this year, I think they could have used a guy like Jackson Robinson. So Really, really cool to see him come into his own. He's a little bit older in terms of NBA draft prospects that will probably get him uh, pushed down and maybe into the uh, second round. But this is a guy who I think, once again, is going to be a, a, a player that an NBA team is going to be very happy to have because he has shown progression, steady progression, ever since he showed up at BYU. And Mark Pope's uh, system, the, the offense and the style of play that BYU play, it's very NBA-esque. Uh, Bill Self said as much. He said it's an, very much an NBA-type model. And that's what NBA teams like. They like to be able to project guys and say, okay, how would he fit in what we're doing on our squad here? Well, Jackson Robinson can just kind of look at it and say, this is what I can do. He has blocked plenty of shots. He's locked up opposing wing players. He's been very good about switching on to smaller guards and has shown the ability to overwhelm them with his length and athleticism. It, it's a fantastic honor for him to have this in his back pocket because it just adds to an already impressive resume when it comes to Jackson Robinson's future. But uh, I guess my only argument is, where in the world, why in the world, excuse me, why in the world is he not on one of the 50, why, why didn't he get one of the 15 slots on the all big 12 teams? And why also did Ali Khalifa not get an all honorable, all mention thing, honor, honorable, all mention, honorable mention, all big 12, because all he did was carve up uh, opposing big 12 teams. Yeah. His stats weren't necessarily otherworldly, especially when it comes to scoring. And let's be honest, a lot of us, including coaches like to look at scoring numbers, but his assist to turnover ratio, his ability to impact the game, even doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Uh, it absolutely was all big 12 caliber in my mind. So yeah, I I'm, I'm happy I am very happy for Jackson Robinson to be the sixth man of the year. I'm happy for Spencer Johnson, Dallin Hall, and Foose uh, for them getting honorable mention, all Big 12 status. But it felt like BYU got a little bit screwed, uh, honestly, with regards to postseason honor. So 
it is what it is. And now the best part is if you if they do decide to do that, they can have a little bit of that chip on the shoulder and go play against some of these guys who were so-called better than them on postseason honors, go out in the Big 12 tournament and show what they're capable of and say, okay, you didn't think I was good enough? Let's show what I show you what I can do on the court. And that that should be something they should carry with them if they really do uh, believe that they were uh, capable of being at that level. All right. So I, I will step aside, but I really do want to say congratulations to Jackson Robbins. It's been an absolutely incredible, incredible run to track him. Uh, he was a guest here on this podcast, was very, very uh, fun to talk to, very insightful uh, young man as well. And uh, I am very excited for his future because it appears it is going to be very, very bright for him. All right, coming up here in just a minute, uh, we will finally get to some BYU football. I was at a BYU football practice on Friday. I got a few notes I wanted to pass along to you guys about what I observed and what I believe BYU is doing uh, during spring camp. They're now a third of the way officially uh, through camp. I Practice six is tomorrow. We'll be back out there uh, tracking things and having interviews uh, for you as well, so stay tuned for that. But coming up next, give you some of my reaction uh, from Friday's uh, football practice, as well as a look at the weekend for other BYU sports, including the first ever Big 12 wins for two BYU uh, programs. We'll get to all that as we continue on right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. The best part about LinkedIn, my friends, is uh, they want to help you guys when you're hiring for your business. The best part is you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role you're hiring for. That's why you guys need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professional for your team faster and, more importantly, do it for free. Yes, you heard that right. LinkedIn is not just another job board. It's a vast network of more than a billion professionals. Makes you think you're the best place to hire. Gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. And it is all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is super easy easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours of their job posting. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing many, many hats, might not have the adequate time or resources to hire. That's why they want to step in and help you guys out with it. And more than 2.5 million small businesses are using LinkedIn for hiring today. So post your job for free today at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post that job for free. Of course, terms and conditions apply. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends at Utah Community Credit Union. Now, Utah Community Credit Union has elevated the checking accounts by enhancing them with more benefits, more savings, and more online protections than ever before. A lot more, my friends. Paired with the most advanced and comprehensive mobile banking tools, elevated checking is a must-have financial product packed with lifestyle, security, and financial benefits for you, the consumer. The security benefits alone include identity monitoring that actively scans thousands of databases for early detection of possible identity theft, credit monitoring that lets you to any changes in your credit report, dark web monitoring, that alerts you if your personal information has been exposed and identity theft recovery or res resolution, excuse me, with up to $10,000 in ID theft reimbursement and specialists to help you out uh, in that circumstance. Elevated checking is free when you do any one of the following. Use your credit or debit card 15 times or more a month. Make a monthly direct deposit of $500 or more or maintain an average daily balance of $1,500 in your account. Otherwise, their elevated checking is just $6 a month. So visit uccu.com to open an elevated checking account online today or stop by any branch in person to open that account right away, my friends. It's all courtesy of your friends at UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. I want to encourage you, if, not, have you not, if you have not done so, check out our 24-7 uh, streaming channel on YouTube covering all of the sports out there. It's called Locked On Sports Today. It's also now available on the Amazon Fire free TV channels app, as we mentioned a little bit earlier on on today's podcast. It's a great way to get caught up on all the sports news of the day with our local shows, including yours truly with the Locked On uh, Cougars. And they also have the national shows covering the leagues as well. Get it today wherever uh, you get uh, your Amazon Fire uh, or Amazon. I guess, content or check it out on YouTube. All right. So as a BYU football practice on Friday and they had their first uh, full uh, contact scrimmage of the spring and uh, outside of Gary Bohannon and Jake Retzloff, the quarterbacks were live. We saw four quarterbacks uh, take reps on Friday, Trayson Borgay, who is a, a, a transfer into the program, as well as Kate Fennigan, were both wearing regular jerseys and were eligible to be tackled in this game. Uh, in the not game, the, but in the practice. And uh, I really thought I actually was really appreciative that BYU let us watch a little bit of that because uh, typically teams are not going to let you show, uh, not going to show much when it comes uh, to spring camp, especially when it comes to full contact uh, scrimmage type stuff. But it was really cool to see Kalani Satake say that, hey, I, we're looking to be as physical as possible. He says, I don't know any other way other to, than to actually tackle and have guys go at it. And uh, I, I got uh, probably four or five observations I want to pass along 
along to you guys uh, about Friday's practice. First, uh, the hype around Ephraim Asiata is absolutely well-founded. That young man is, in a word, violent. Uh, he came across the field. Reiner Swanson caught a short pass, was in the process of being tackled, and Ephraim Asiata just came over and just absolutely walloped him. And I use uh, that term wallop. It was just, it was a monster hit. I'll just say this. We were across the field. I was about, man, so across the field, 52 yards in a football field. So he's on the other sideline almost. And then I'm about 30 or 40 yards downfield. And I heard that hit clear as day. It was absolutely just a, a, a just a wallop as the term I decided to go with. And Really, really impressed with the Ephraim Asiata is showing. Yes, he is undersized to play a uh, rush end right now for BYU. They list him, I think, generously at 210 pounds. Uh, he's going to need to pack on some weight, and he will do that, I think, this summer as he hits the weights a little bit harder and gets into uh, the training program for BYU. But the one thing I know about Ephraim is he has a motor that doesn't stop. There's that uh, pretty uh, incredible clip of him blowing up Jake Griffin, a redshirt freshman offensive lineman that's been circulating on the internet. It was a clip uh, from practice, a, a practice film, and Ephraim is absolutely got the motor, the drive, the hunger, and just the, the violence uh, to make an impact for BYU this season. I, I really do believe that. Uh, number two, the Reiner Swanson hype continues, and for good reason. That kid is going to be an impact player for BYU. I don't know, maybe it's as soon as this season or even after his mission. I don't know what his uh, when it is, but he is going to be a guy BYU is very excited to have it tied in. He continues to show some really nice things. And him paired with Keanu Hill, who, by the way, what a transition to tight end it appears for him early on in spring camp. He just looks natural at the spot. He continues to have the athleticism and speed he had at wide receiver. Just He's only 30 pounds heavier now. It's, it's absolutely incredible uh, what Keanu Hill is doing because a lot of guys, when you move a position that you've played pretty much your entire life and do that in very short order, it's usually not very natural. It appears that Keanu Hill is adapting to tight end quite well, and that's a, a very exciting thing. Um, now the offensive line, I think is still going to be a work in progress all spring long and honestly on into the summer and then into training camp. But I am liking what TJ Woods is bringing to this old line in terms of their mentality. The one thing, and uh, Connor pay has said it on this podcast when he's been on is that the past regime for BYU at offensive line just didn't uh, teach technique all that deeply. Uh, they didn't uh, go and say, okay, when you step here, hand here placement of this, you want to be uh, angling here that, that that stuff was not coached as as deeply or as um, pointedly as it needed to have been over the past two or three seasons. And a number of the young offensive linemen for BYU uh, have suffered because of it. And Connor Pea has all but said that on this podcast. With what TJ Woods is bringing in, I can see it uh, when I'm out there, is that this offensive line is starting to understand, okay, when we are doing this, let's say, for example, they run their outside zone running scheme, and you guys know what that is because you've watched BYU run it for five or six years now. Uh, but when they uh, all move in concert to one side of the field or another, you're seeing them realizing, okay, I step here, I got to keep my eyes there, or I got to put my hand placement here on this guy to help neutralize him as a defender. It's it, the, the, the nitty gritty details of the offensive line play are being taught. And I really, really appreciate that from TJ Woods. Is it going to take some time? I think for some of these young offensive linemen who have talent uh, to get up to speed and really be able to uh, really step in and uh, play without thinking. Yes, it will take some time to do that. But I think BYU's offensive line on the back end of that transformation uh, period is going to be much better for it. If that makes sense. So uh, I like what I see from the offensive line play. And then on defense, the defense, Defensive line continues to show some uh, very nice things, but they are not uh, operating, I think, uh, completely in sync yet. It's similar to the offensive line. There's a lot of new guys in there. Danny Saili, I already mentioned Ephraim Asiata. Uh, we have some established guys like Tyler Batty and Isaiah Banya who are back for another year. They got to get in sync with one another. But there are moments of absolute brilliance for both the offensive and defensive lines uh, during the media uh, viewing portions. We'll have another one of those tomorrow afternoon, and I'll have uh, plenty of updates for you guys on our Wednesday show after that. But uh, it's really fun to see that the, the guys are learning as they go along here. And that's what exactly what spring is for. It's four guys uh, to go out there, make mistakes, learn from it, then get back out there and try it again, rep it and uh, be better for it. But uh, Jay Hill's defense is very much installed at this point. Guys uh, are having an understanding of, okay, this is what is expected. And I think that that level of ex expectation, uh, the, once the talent and the, the, 
I guess the the knowledge of what they need to do uh, catches up with that. This is going to be a unit I think is going to be a force to be reckoned with, but it, it's going to take all 15 practices here in spring to get up to speed in that regard. And that's but that's why you have this. That's why you have this period uh, of spring camp for BYU. So there you go. Some of my thoughts uh, from BYU spring camp. Uh, like I said, I'll have more tomorrow. I will say uh, based on Friday, one other note real quick, based on Friday's practices, uh, Jake Retzloff was the best quarterback for my money, uh, for my observation window. But let me also reiterate that our observation windows are about 20 minutes, uh, whereas these practices are two plus hours long. So it's literally a snapshot of what an overall practice is. But uh, in the media viewing portion on Friday, it was Jake Retzloff's day at quarterback for the Cougars. All right, a couple of notes before we go real quick. Uh, congratulations uh, to BYU uh, Baseball. They got their first ever Big 12 win uh, in the first game of a doubleheader on Friday. Then they did lose uh, the nightcap of that doubleheader 2-0. They won the game 1-4-1. One, one. So they finished the weekend out at uh, West Virginia 1-2. and two, But they get that first win in program history in the Big 12. So congratulations to BYU on that. Uh, they are back in action uh, tomorrow as they head up to Salt Lake City to take on the Utah Utes. Uh, that'll be at Smith's Ballpark. First pitch at 6 o'clock Mountain Time. It will be broadcast live on the Pac-12 Network. But if you want to get out and watch it, uh, you could uh, venture on over uh, to a Smith's ballpark. Now, BYU softball had a rough weekend. They got a uh, beat uh, in the first two games of their triple, uh, their, I don't know, triple header, their three game series against Texas Tech. They got run ruled actually on Friday. 15 nothing, a rough showing there. But BYU bounced back on Saturday with a uh, great six inning grand slam from Matty Udall, uh, helping BYU get their first ever Big 12 win to beat the uh, Red Raiders in the uh, series finale and avoid the sweep. So they won that one 10 to 8. So congratulations uh, to BYU softball. Uh, they are back in action today. They will be taking on UVU at Gail Miller Field today. Uh, live stats will be available online, or if you want to head over uh, to Provo, you can check that out at four o'clock is first pitch in that. And then Finally, BYU uh, men's volleyball, number six ranked Cougars, split their weekend out at Stanford against number seven, uh, the number seven Cardinal. BYU won in five sets, absolutely thrilling fashion on Friday, and then got swept on Saturday. But a good showing for BYU over the weekend overall. They are back in action. I think later this week they're back on the road. You know, they have a uh, they have a bye week, and then they will head to Pepperdine a week uh, out. So there you go. That's what I got for you guys in terms of the weekend recap for other sports. All right, that's gonna do it. A big thank you once again for your support of the podcast. At as always, once again, tomorrow on the show, I'll have plenty of thoughts on BYU football, BYU basketball. And yes, we are going to have an interview that I uh, did uh, last week uh, with Chase Roberts, a BYU wide receiver. Great chat with him. We'll have that on tomorrow's podcast for you guys as well. So until tomorrow, have a great rest of your day. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you for being every day with us here on the podcast. And of course, we'll catch you guys again soon right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Where of course, the, your, it is your team every day right here on Locked on Cougars.